Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 113. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we are here now for the Class A World Tour. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, we're going to be taking the Porsche 997, 911 Turbo. Uh, and yeah, we've got six tracks to do. Circuit de Catalunya, Camino Valle de Montserrat, Sedona, Sunset Peninsula, Road America, and then Sedona again. Two of them? Oh yeah, one's a reverse and one's a normal. Okay, fair enough. Let's get going. Ah, oh, shit, I forgot to uh, sort out my timer. So I have the timer there. I've just realized this is a stock car. This hasn't actually got any upgrades, I don't think. Did I upgrade it? No, it's stock. And I'm destroying the rest of the pack. Let's go. I don't like it though. I want it upgraded. I want it faster. I want a faster car. Give me more. I'm greedy. I want more. <laughs> Not too bad. Good start so far. This Corvette's hungry for blood. Oh, okay. There we go. That Corvette's hot on my heels right now. Fucking hell, this car's quick. Fucking hell. Oh, wow. I'm just hearing it all throughout that corner. I genuinely thought I was going to go off into the dirt then. But uh, we made it, just about. Corvette's behind us. I'm going to upgrade the car between this race and the next one, so I've got even faster. Technically could have an, uh, some form of comparison.
Do I'm still surprised how this um I mean it it kind of makes sense because on paper it's a very underperforming car. It's not got as much horsepower as that Corvette. It's not got the tires. It's got four-wheel drive which should theoretically slow something like this down but for some unknown reason this car is so much quicker Not bad. So YPF. kind of weird how modern day gaming you think I've plugged in to this console Motorsport 1, Motorsport 2, Motorsport 3 they're all fairly playable games but you plug in like Motorsport 7 well, actually Motorsport 7 gets to get out of jail free card that's actually an alright game but you plug in anything else like of the modern day generation Gran Turismo 7, for example. If you put that game into a PS5, don't install any updates, just run it straight as it is, offline system, whatnot. Obviously, you'd still need to update the game to get the servers, but that game on day one was not the best. A lot of games nowadays are just heavily dependent on, what's it called, day one patches and stuff like that. Like I understand, oh yeah, push out a patch to get those fat final few bugs and stuff like that. I've got nothing against that, it's just developers are now relying on it so that they can release worse games and then make them better eventually kind of thing it's a very uh very sucky way of doing it I don't, I'm not a fan of it
most never played games that are released post 2015. Do you mean like on day one or like just in general you don't play games after 2015? Because I think there are good games that have come out in the modern day. Just in general. Interesting. I think you're missing out on a few good ones. Definitely. Like Doom Eternal was a phenomenal game. I, I think Doom Eternal, as much as I hate the whole Mick Gordon, id Software incident... I still have to give if it's ID Software prop that they've done an absolutely amazing job with that game. Like it came out day one was phenomenal. I know it sounds odd, but I may be tempted to go back and watch my playthrough of it. Just because I want to experience that day one patch of the game. I don't think they change much of it anyways, but just that that playthrough that I did on Doom Eternal, that was just the shit. That was amazing. Go, go, go. Oh shit. Do you happen to know how ultra shit the Minecraft launcher is? Yes. Minecraft went to shit as soon as Microsoft bought them out. Let's be honest. I, th I think the last good update, I'm not sure whether it was 1.14 or 1.13. But it was either one of them was the best update of Minecraft. It was just good. I think it was the one before... Yeah, it was before the Aqua one. Which one was the Aqua one? Because whatever one was before that, that was it. Yo, Hans, what up? What up, G? Oh, Hans, guess what? Um, I've taken a 38-hour drive. <laughs> On Euro Truck, it's going from the very top, top left. <laughs> I had to do the L's on my hands. Uh, the very top left of Spain to the middle of Czech Republic, I think. And it sort of weaves in through France, Switzerland, Germany, before getting towards Czech Republic, which is pretty awesome. So I'm very excited to do that, do that drive. I'm like 5% of the way through it. <laughs> I'll be 100% honest. I think a lot of people have gotten bored of Minecraft. For the sole purpose that... I don't know. It could be half that people have lost their creative touch. I know that's the reason that I'm bored of Minecraft. I just... There's not really much more that I can do sort of messed about with it. I've done a couple of playthroughs. Like, I don't know. I'm not a very creative-minded person when it comes to, like, literally being given all the tools there. Make something that looks awesome. Ah, here. Two stone blocks. Looks good enough. <laughs> Here's my little stone hut. That's my house. You know. I forgot to do the upgrade. Shit. That's fair enough. Some people don't get tired of it. For some reason, my, um... Tidal grabber thing isn't working.
Oh, I know why. It's because the tidal window wasn't open. Ah, makes more sense now. Um, I do think I need to have a look at my footage because that frame rate fluctuation is really concerning me. Is that because Steam's doing stuff in the background? Steam isn't even open. What? Okay. I just keep dropping like a single frame here and there. But like... Yeah, my frame rates goes between tits, not tits. This has been a horrendous first lap so far. Yeah, there's so much stuff that you can do with Minecraft. It's just, you know, if you if you play it for a substantial amount of time, it gets boring, you know. Uh, is uh, is FM five good or bad? I think all of the motorsport games are good. It's just some are better than others. Um, I don't think there's a motorsport game that I can say, ha, that game is shit, never play it. I think in terms of Forza games, at the moment I could say out of all the Horizon games, you could give Horizon 5 a miss because it's just been an absolute shit show from the developers. Um, but yeah... I'd other than Horizon 5, I don't think any of the Forza games are bad. I think they're all good, I just think there are some that are better than others. Oh, and Motorsport 1. Motorsport 1's terrible as well. That was shockingly bad. Really frustrating. Uh, I, su I suppose FM6 could be a bit boring. Um... But I think it's because with those more motorsport games, they sort of open up the categories a little bit more. Um, they're not as restrictive, so the, you can take a lot more variety of vehicles into races. And I think that's the problem with motorsport 5 and 6, because they don't force you to take... Um, yeah, because Motorsport 5, 6, and 7 don't force you to take a certain car, they only force you to use a certain class, you have actually quite a wide range of vehicles to choose from, which is good, but the problem is a lot of people don't take that variety option, and they just go, oh yeah, I can take this car in like three events, I'll do it for all three. Oh, I'm bored of the game. Because you haven't picked different cars. So when when I do uh, Motorsport 5, I'm going to do um, I'm going to pick like four cars because I think for the first few events in a category, I think because Motorsport 5 does it differently, they give you like 17 races per championship. Per, like, car, homologation, whatever it is. But only five of them are part of the main championship. So when you select it, you get five, six, seven races. And then the rest are bonuses. I'll obviously be doing the bonus races. But from Motorsport, uh, for Motorsport 5, I think for those, like, that initial part, I'll have one car that I want to drive and then for all the bonus ones it will just be a random wheel spin so we'll have random 
mixes of cars. Uh, a good variety, so it should be slightly more interesting, I think, Motorsport 5 from, like, a viewing perspective. That's sort of the plan I have, uh, and I hope it goes well. Uh, and it's sort of similar to the plan I've got for Horizon 2. Because Horizon 2 has a lot of events, but lots of different categories. So the plan is to sort of jumble it up and make sure we've got something completely different for each place that we go to. I think I'll get people to vote as well. The upgrading thing in FM7 is ultra shit. Well, no. In FM7, you get a choice when you buy a car, either to have it stock, so normal, or homologated, where it has race regulations. You can't abuse those regulations. I think... I think Motorsport 7, in terms of, like, race restrictions and stuff like that, is the best that they've done. Because you can just homologate a vehicle and use it. Um, I think Motorsport 7 is the best that they did. Because a lot of the other Forza games... Um, you sort of have to just rely on auto upgrades to make sure the car is fully legal. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've actually got my main, uh, monitor. My AOC. I have it set for my PC. For 60 hertz. I know I can do one... I can do up to 165. So... But I've got it set to 60 for the sole reason that... Some of the games that I'm playing at the moment just do not work at all um with like v-sync properly so it will just set it to whatever your monitor's refresh rate is set as and you can't change it which is a pain in the ass so uh, i've been using basically like hardware limited frame limiters kind of thing um, I'm not sure what game it was. I think one of them is Euro Truck because Euro Truck is an absolute bitch when you tab out of it and tab into it. It just sets it to whatever your monitor's normal refresh rate is. So when it was 120, I'd set it to 60 in Euro Truck, and as soon as I tab out and tab back in, it's 120 frames a second. And I'm like, I don't want 120 frames a second from your truck. It is not a hardcore simulator that I need 120 frames a second. On the other hand, WRC Generations, please give me 120 frames a second. <laughs> and it won't. <laughs> so, the two games that I'm playing at the moment have just been absolute bitches. But the Euro Truck one is an easy fix. WRC Generations, not so much. Not really anything I can do to fix it. At least it runs at 60, though. I mean, if Generations ran at 30, I, I, I would have refunded it straight away. Well, to be fair, the launcher isn't the problem when it comes to, like, actual saves and stuff like that. I've not really had a problem too much with the Minecraft launcher, except for um, the fact that I just can't install it. For some reason, my... Uh, Microsoft now forces you to use the Microsoft Store to download the Minecraft launcher. You can't do the old school method. Um, and that's a pain in the ass because my Microsoft Store doesn't work on my PC. 
searching for certain purpose Unearthing words from the sternum Burn and disturb them Dismember verbs I verbally murder Wobbling this way and that The crowd wobble heads when he's rocking the track <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Few turns out the aliens were nice. I step silent types on the mic. Selling rhymes for diamonds, rubies, and all kinds of shiny items. Paraphernalia, don't rap back. That's an absolute failure. Not bad. Woohoo! All right, I will take that. Right, so loaded Need for Speed Unbound on the EA trial. Okay, morning, fine. Afternoon, crashed. Guess what it said? So basically, um, Steam just did its normal play thing where it says that it's loading and then the game's not running anymore. So Steam didn't know what was happening with it. But the EA launcher loaded up, said, we're sorry, we had a problem loading your game trial. And then there was a button that said close and another button that said get the game. Which had me very confused why EA was trying to get me to buy the game when I had the game trial, and the game trial apparently struggled to load. As if buying the game would fix that? Hmm? But uh, it, it, all it took was for me to restart my PC, it worked perfectly fine afterwards. Um, I think I've played... Four hours of Unbound already. So, I, I've got a bit of playtime. As for Unbound, I... I was having this discussion with someone that... Out of all of the Need for Speeds that have come out in the past 10 years, this includes Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012. Need for Speed Unbound is my favourite Need for Speed I've ever played. And I've only played it for four hours. It is my favourite so far. I have no clue why though. I can't put a finger on it because on paper, with how Need for Speed Unbound is, it should be the worst game that EA have made. Which confuses me. Like... I'm. I like the individuality of the game, the fact that it stands out with the anime style to it. I think it looks quite cool. All the little overlays that they put over the car, it's, it's interesting. It's different. I like that. The handling model is fucking superb. Like I haven't played a Need for Speed game where I felt like I actually have control of the car for a while. Um, even Hot Pursuit 2010 didn't really feel like I had much control of the car, but it, I still enjoyed that game. So this was like, wow. Like the handling was cracking. The only th problem I had, I was an idiot because I was like, I want a Civic. Pick the Civic and then realized, shit, I've just pr picked a front wheel drive car. And a lot of the high value events that kept coming up were drift events on tarmac, which is like impossible in a front wheel drive. <laughs> so I, I kind of shot myself in the foot there for quite a bit of my playthrough. Underground two time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, off road, it was surprisingly easy to drift. The Civic, but... Um... I mean, the car list is pretty decent. I can't really say I've driven any of them yet, but... There's a decent car list. I like the structure of the game. Um... 
A lot of people are complaining that there's no story, apparently. Which I'm completely perplexed as to how someone can play Need for Speed Unbound and think there's no story. Because these are the same people that worship Most Wanted 05. Which, from my understanding and from what I've seen of Most Wanted 05, was a few cutscenes and a lot of voice lines. When you think about it, and that was pretty much the story, so... With a lot of racing. But people are now complaining about this game, even though there's, like, an absolute metric fuckton of, like, storylines that have been said in the game. In the four hours that I've played so far. So, I've got no clue why people are complaining about that. Um... There are a, there is a fairly decent handful of cutscenes. The one thing I will say, um, I'm obviously lucky enough that I've got a PC with a decent graphics card. Um, but I have noticed with mine, uh, when I'm playing, I've locked mine at 60 frames a second. Like my monitor is at 60 FPS. Hands, you bitch. Why are you attacking the sim boss? Um, I've limited my Need for Speed Unbound to 60 FPS, and when I'm running it, I've got a, a CPU cooler on here that's got lights on it, and I've set it up specifically so I can get like an approximate temperature of what my CPU and my GPU are. Um, in Unbound, because of the way that it uses DLSS, and it's on by default. I didn't change any of the settings. It looks amazing. <laughs> I think it looks really good. Um, but it's fairly in unison. So if if your GPU is doing a lot, your CPU is doing quite a bit as well. Um, whenever you're in game, my my cooler would be a, a sort of yellowy green color, which normally means about 50 to 55 degrees Celsius on the graphics card. CPU's probably around that bracket as well. As soon as we got into cutscenes, the CPU sort of stayed at around about 55, 60 degrees Celsius. Maybe 65, nothing ridiculous. But the graphics card went up to its red colour. Which means it got up to 65 as well. Which, bearing in mind, the graphics card rarely goes over 70 degrees, my one. And my CPU doesn't go any more than 90 degrees Celsius. Even 80. I, I don't think I've ever seen it go above 80. So, you could tell there was a lot more load in the cutscenes. Now, that that's sort of a cause for concern. Because if someone is running the game um, on, like, lower-end hardware, they might end up with a cutscene that doesn't look great like if your unbound is only just running at 60 fps you're going to be running the cutscenes at like 30 um i mean there's no problem with that because they are just cutscenes but you know it's just a point um but yeah, with all all the stuff that I, the amount of stuff that I noticed, yeah, very strange. Well, minimal requirement, PC requirements aren't really valid anymore because people can get anything to run on a PC now. So as long as you've got an up-to-date graphics driver should run pretty much um i don't even think i updated my graphics card um so i'm actually kind of surprised that i'm bound around hmm. i wouldn't know how to help then hans because your situation seems more like an anomaly 
then a widespread issue, if, you, if that makes sense. It's probably like one tiny thing, like a setting or something. Yeah. I mean, more than likely it's something to do with the EA launcher. And the EA launcher is an absolute bitch at the moment, but... Obviously on the Steam Deck it doesn't run anymore, so you can't run any EA games on Steam for the Steam Deck. So I couldn't try it. Where was I? Where was I going with this point? What was I saying before? Oh yeah, the amount of stuff from like past Need for Speed games that I noticed is unreal, so... Obviously Need for Speed Heat copied a lot of the weather stuff from 2015. But oh my god, they literally had so much of the weather, like, stuff from Need for Speed 2015. A lot of, um... Have you got an AMD graphics card by any chance, Hans? Because I've got an AMD CPU, I've got an NVIDIA graphics card, and it works a treat. Playing it, so... Yeah, that might be why then. AMD graphics cards are not known for working with a lot of games on day one. Um, it's just a problem with AMD more than the developers because AMD hasn't cracked. That's the only reason that. Because I would buy that new AMD graphics card if it wasn't for the fact. Yeah, I mean, AMD's, um, what's it called? Um, GPU support is terrible. Um, they're just not quite there. Yeah, the firmware is just not quite there with AMD stuff compared to NVIDIA. That's why it's always, at the moment, it's the own... I hate NVIDIA as a company, but they really do have clamped down on their firmware. I'm, I'm surprised. Like, if companies like Meta have got in trouble for Oculus being a monopoly over the VR industry, I'm surprised that NVIDIA hasn't got in trouble for being a monopoly over the graphics card industry, because that's what they are at this point. They are a monopoly over the graphics card industry. Uh, I think that... Uh, needs to get looked into but yeah like the weather stuff was a copy from Need for Speed 2015 uh, I want to finish this point quickly uh, what was from Payback a lot of the off-roading and stuff like that was from Payback there wasn't too much from Need for Speed uh, maybe the storyline is inspired by Payback sort of um, it's not really much of a spoiler, it's just the first hour. So, if you find that a spoiler, then it hasn't spoiled much. Um, and pretty much all the UI is a copy from Heat. So, there's a lot of stuff that's been copied, but it does feel like a new game. But it feels like it's all copied at the same time and it's really strange I physically cannot say that's what makes this game other than the handling model I cannot put a finger on saying why Need for Speed Unbound is my favourite Need for Speed that has come out in the last 10 years but it is it's the one I've enjoyed the most and I can't put a finger on why because everything on paper is either copied from past ones or just plain shit it's strange so thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy be sure to leave a like comment down below and subscribe and i will see you in the next one peace out